Um, today we're going to look at Dijkstra's algorithm. This is a, a very simple and, and very useful algorithm for finding the shortest distance from A to B. But really, I suppose we should say the least weight from getting from A to B um, on, a, uh, on a path, because it might be the shortest time and we want to spend the least time getting from A to somewhere, or it could be the least expense or it could, as I said, be the least distance, um, the optimal path of some sort. And it was invented by a Dutch guy called Edsker Dijkstra, and this is how it works. This is a very simple one. Now, you might be able to guess the answer. Now, that is absolutely not what we're interested in here. We want to use an algorithm so that when we have much more complicated diagrams, that we will definitely get the shortest path. And here we're asked for the shortest path from A to E. And then we're also asked later, what is the route and what's the shortest distance? And then what about from A to D? Because Dijkstra, once you've found the way from the best way from the beginning to the end, he will also tell you what is the shortest distance from the starting point to any other point as a byproduct. And so um, here we go. The method is the following. I'm starting at A. We have at each box we have this is the order in the middle box is for what's the order in which you did this. Was this the first, second, third, or fourth um, one that you chose? And this is for what is the final value of getting to that point. And down below might be working values. In other words, uh, improving values for that, as you shall see. Now, what we a well from A to A to is zero, and so that's going to be our, our our first final value because obviously if you start at A, that's going to be your first point of of reference, and it's going to take you zero to get from A to A. Once you've written down a working value, you sorry, once you've written down a final value, you write down the working values for everybody that this. Uh, node A leads to. So A goes to B would be 6, and A goes to C, it's linked with 3. And you don't put any other working values except the ones that lead from one that has a final value. Next, you examine the final values of your, of any, anyone that has a working value, the rest don't. The lowest of those is 3, 3 is lower than 6. So C becomes our second working value, and it's got a working value of 3. And it is a very good idea to say, where did it come from? It came from A. That's very handy at the end to work backwards to find where did you come from. So C is now our second working value. C goes to D, and it also goes to B. So if you go from C to B, you've got a working, it takes 3 to get here, plus 1, is four. So you can now, you know that you can get to B in a distance of four. C has a working uh, final value of three. If you add four to that, you get seven. So D has a working value of seven. You stop there. That They're the only ones that your new final value leads on to. And you look at the ones that have values. B has a value of four. D has a value of seven. The lowest of that is four. So B becomes our third working value a final value with a final value of four. Where did that come from? It came up from C. Keep a record of where it come from, came from. Very good idea. Ah, so now we have a third working value at B. B goes to two places. It goes to E. Four and four gives you eight. It also goes to D. Seven, um, four and one is five. And now we look at our the ones that have working values still. They are E and D. E is 8, D is 5. The lowest of those is 5. So D becomes our fourth um, one to have a final value, and its final value is 5. And where did it come from? It came from B. B leads on to E. 5 and 2 is 7 which is lower than 8. 
So E becomes our fifth and final with the vo uh, final value of seven. So the answer to the question, what's the shortest distance? Here are the answers to the questions. The shortest distance from A to E is seven. What is the optimal route? Well, you ended at E, which came, oh, I should have put in where it came from. It came from D. I forgot to put that in. That was bold of me. E came from D, so I'm working backwards. Where did D came, come from? Oh, it came from B, so I put in B. Where did B come from? It came from C. And where did C come from? It came from A. That is the optimal route going from A to C to B to D to E. And that has a, a, a total value of 7. Write down the shortest distance from A to D. Well, if you look at D, the final value was 5. And so that's the shortest distance from A to D. That's a byproduct of Dijkstra. And what route was that? Well, D came from B, which came from C, which came from A. That's it. That's a very simple and basic one. But now we do a far more complicated one. And again, all of these are in the book. Very clearly explained, explained step by step by step. The, the, the explanation is not just a diagram like that. It's each stage along the way is explained. Now, this is a more complicated one where we have to go from A to J. And the, it is a system of a network of roads. And the numbers on each arc represents the time in minutes to travel that road. And it does uh, going forwards and backwards. Uh, uh, here, we, uh, going from A to B takes 17 minutes and going from B to A uh, we're assuming it takes 17 minutes. So we're asked to use Dijkstra's algorithm to find the quickest route from A to J, state your quickest time and write down, uh, sorry, the, state the quickest route and write down the time taken. So here's how it goes. Obviously, A is our first uh, working value with a working value of naught. That's always the case. And that was given in the question. So if A is our first final value with zero, 0 and 17 gives us 17, so we can get to B in 17. 0 and 18 gives us going to C at 18. 0 and 15 is 15. And they're the only working values at the moment. Which of those is the lowest? The answer is D. So it's our second working value. Its final value is 15, and it came from A. Having established that this is our second one with a final value, it moves on to F and to I. So we fill in working values for F and for I. 15, it takes to D, plus 14 is 29. A has a final value, D has a final value of 15 added to 29 gives you 44. So that's the working value for I. And now we look at all of our working values, 17, 8, 18, 29, and 44. Well, the lowest of those is 17. So B becomes our third working value, uh, for third final value with a final value of 17. And where did it come from? It came from A. S uh, since B is our third final value, we anything that it leads on to is included. 17 and 27 is 44. 17 and 18 is 35, and that's all. And now we look at all our working values, 44, 35, 18, 29, and 44. We don't look at the ones that have a final value. The lowest of those is C with 18. So C becomes our first, fourth final value with a final value of 18. Where did it come from? It came from A. Now, what does that do? Well, 18 goes on, sorry, C goes on to E and to F. If you go from C to E, you have a final value of 18 plus 15 is 33. Ah, that's an improvement. If it was greater than 35, you wouldn't bother writing it down. But since it's an improvement, we'll put it in. 18 and 10 is 28. That's an improvement on 29. So that's the best working value so far for F. And now we look at our working values, 44, 33, 28, 
44. The best of those is 28. So F becomes our fifth final value. Its final value is 28. And where did it came from? It came from C. Now C goes up to E, a distance four. So 28 and four gives you 32. Oh, that's an improvement for E. E will be delighted to get trim one minute off there. 28 and 17 is 45 for H. And 28 and 13 is 41. Oh, that's an improvement on 44. So they go in. We look at all the ones without final values. Their working values are 44, 32, 45, and 41. The lowest of those is 32. And that becomes the sixth working value. A final value, sorry, final value, 32. Where did it come from? Well, that 32 came from F. It came up from F there on that short road, or quick road, I should say. Since this is now, since E is now our latest final value, we look at all the roads that lead onwards from E. Um, 32 and 6 would give you 38. Oh, that's a big improvement. And 32 and 12 would give you 44, which is a small improvement. So we now look at our working values that are not final values. They are 38, 44, and 41. The best of the shortest of those is 38. So G becomes the seventh working, uh, the seventh final value, and its final value is 38. Where did it come from? It came from E. 32 and 6 gave us that 30. It came from E. So where does G lead on to, since it's our seventh final value? Uh, 38 and 15 is 53. That goes to J. And that's the only place it leads on to. So now we look at our three working values, 44, 41, 43. The lowest of those is 41. So I becomes our eighth working va final value with a final value of 41. Where did 41 come in? It came from C. Now, C, this is our, I is now our, our latest working value. Uh, it leads on to uh, H with a working value of 41 and 3 is 44. So there's no point in putting that in. It's equal. If it's either equal or greater than, there's no point in it. It can't improve from 44. 41 and 13 is 54. That is not an improvement on 53, so I'm not going to put that in. And so that there is no improvement possible. So we now look at our only two working values, 44 and 53. 44 is the lowest of those. So H becomes our ninth with a working value of 44. It came from E, though it could have come, as we saw, from uh, I as well. And uh, 44 and 11 is 55. There is no point in writing 55 because that's not an improvement. And so J's is our 10th and its final value is 53. Where did it came from? It came from, uh, it came from G. So we have, we're going to answer the question A. I'm just going to move that a little bit up. The question, the answer to the question is, what's the quickest route from A to J? Well, we ended at J. J came from G. Go back to G. G came from E. Go back to E. E came from F. Go down to F. F came from C. Go over to C. C came from A. That is the optimal path. That's the best route. And it took 53 minutes. And now we have a wonderful question where you have to put your brains in action. There are 20 containers at A which need to be transported on trucks to J. J is a port uh, where they will be loaded onto a ship. It takes 30 minutes to load and 30 minutes to unload a container onto and off the truck. Work starts at 8 o'clock in the morning. 
when trucks can start loading containers and bringing them to J. The entire operation must be finished by five in the evening when the trucks must be all back at A and all the containers must be on the ship. First question, next question. How long does it take a truck to load a container, travel to J as quickly as possible, unload and then return? Well, the answer is it takes 30 minutes to load it on, 53 minutes to travel to J, 53 minutes, oh, 30 minutes to unload, and then 53. So that's 106 and uh, 60 is 166 minutes. Second question and final question. How many trucks will we need to get all containers onto the ship and return to the base at A? What a clever question. Well, we have until eight in the, from eight in the morning until five in the evening, we have nine hours, which is nine by 60, which everybody knows is 540 minutes, except all the students in my own fifth year class who don't know their times tables. But we'll, we'll, we'll prescind, uh, prescind from that. So we have 540 minutes. Now, if each truck takes 166 minutes, how many journeys can they make? So, well, we'll try 540. We will divide that by 166. It goes in roughly 3.25 or 2.6 times. Sorry, it doesn't. I'm going to do that again. 540 divided by, um, I'm going to do that again. 540 divided by 166 is... 3.25, it is, 3.25. So they could do 3.25 journeys. So, well, how many complete journeys can they do? They can do three complete journeys in their working day each. So a, a, one truck driver can go from A to J and back again three times. So it could bring three containers. Each driver could bring three containers to the port and then get back. So now we have 20 tr uh, containers to be bought. When we divide that by three, we realize we will need six and two thirds drivers. Now, if you take six drivers, you won't get the job done. So obviously you'd need seven drivers uh, to complete the whole task because six and two thirds drivers, there's no such thing, but we will need um, seven drivers and one of them uh, most of them will bring uh, three containers each, but the last one will only have to do um, to bring two, and he'll get back home to his kids when they get home from school, and he'll have the pasta ready for them, or she will. We must not be uh, assuming that all the truck drivers are males. So that is a beautiful example from the book of uh, Dijkstra's algorithm put into a real life situation with a little spin off at the end, which makes students think. The point of Dijkstra, of course, it should be emphasized, is that when you have a highly complex, uh, much longer uh, thing than this, you can use a computer as long as you have intelligent people like the applied math students who start this year and know how to do this, they'll be able to write programs when they're in college to get this all done by a computer. So we're sort of moving people towards thinking the way uh, algorithms work, but without the actual use of the computer, ideal for students to make their way through life in the 21st century. Thank you.